Sammy and I have been taking a bunch of challenges lately where we are either removing our screens for a certain portion of time or we're getting off of social media or we're not watching TV and we're testing these different things to see if we get connected to ourselves. And we actually just did a podcast talking about screen time, fasting, you know, creating margin in our lives. We actually took a full week off of Netflix TV shows, which as parents who at the end of the day crave to be in front of a screen sometimes just to catch some glimpse of autonomy and rest, it was very difficult to want to give up that time. But when we did, something awesome happened. And so we did a very short podcast episode on this subject. I think it was like 20 minutes. We actually re-recorded it because we filmed it the first time, had terrible audio, did a 20-minute version. But this 20-minute podcast is packed with a bunch of new wisdom and revelation on how to create margin in your life, how to get connected to yourself. And I'm excited for you to listen to the conversation. So without further ado, enjoy the episode. And if you like the episode, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much. So we just recorded a full podcast and found out Spencer's microphone was off the whole time. So with the small amount of time we have, we're going to do a recap of what we talked about this week, and then hopefully we can get a real episode in this week as well. Uh, but we decided we were going to do a little fast last week, and we wanted to talk about how that impacted us. So what I'll say first is... I think we kind of camp in the place where we just believe that we have full access to God all of the time. Like mm-hmm. that we're fully connected to him. He's inside of us because of the Holy Spirit and we don't have to like strive and do works in order to get more of him. And I felt this invitation though in the last like week where I was thinking about that verse that says draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And I was thinking about how Man, our life is just so busy, and today is a great example of that. I feel like this season has offered a lot of resistance for us and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of just struggle and pain, honestly. And though we're in a beautiful spot, I'd say that we're feeling pretty connected in our marriage and uh, are in a sweet place with God. It just feels like there's so much more. And... What I really wanted to do was take the little amount of margin we do have at the end of the day, uh, which we love. Once it's like Mm. 9 or 9.30, which Wilder goes to bed late, we spend a lot of time every day getting him to bed. And at the end of our day, we just both want to like sit next to each other and not talk and not be needed and just get to watch a show. And it's so nice to look forward to that. And because it's the only margin we have, I just was feeling like, man, I feel so much desire to just tune out at the end of the day. And I feel like it could be causing some like dissociation. And I really want to give that margin to God and create a little more space and room to connect with him and ourselves and just kind of like quiet down our inner world and get some more clarity and connection at the end of the day, rather than filling our mind with a good story. I honestly think fasting can become one of those things where the religious that are addicted to control will use it as another method to get more from God that they believe they can't get without that tool. Yeah. And I don't believe that's what fasting is for. I believe fasting is for creating clarity. Like even in Isaiah 55 it talks about the true fast was inviting in the homeless and the hurting into your homes to feed them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, that's what fasting is. Interesting. You know, in the times that Jesus fasted, it said, then he became hungry. Oh, so he wasn't hungry during that time? Why? Because he was feasting on God. And then he said to the disciples, like, you are, like, they fast because, like, or it's, uh, they were like, why don't your disciples fast? He said, because the bridegroom is with them. Mm-hmm. There will be a time they will fast in that day. Mm-hmm. And then I believe we're in a time of feasting now because we have access to Christ all the time. But I still honestly think that it's just like the healing journey. Healing is not about adding to who you are in Christ. Healing is taking away the things that are counterfeit to your true self in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what fasting is for me in in this context is, okay, there's apathy going on. There's 
a disconnection, there's, you know, whatever it is, what do I need more of? I probably don't need more of anything in my life. I yeah. probably need to find more margin to be able to connect with myself. I probably need to have like, what are some things I can take away? And then we go down the list and it's like, beach time, we'll barely get that. Uh, our walk as a family on the trail, probably don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> work, nope, not in this season. Uh, <laughs> it was like, okay, what can we move around? And still, like my work schedule, I think is is very balanced. But then we look at it, and we're like, okay, it's TV. Ugh. Yeah. Okay, but I'm really addicted to that. <laughs> I want it. I don't want to lose it. It even has some like historical nostalgia for me because of my dad and didn't super like know how to connect with me and my brothers growing up. And so a lot of our bonding happened with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Mel Gibson, blood guts, fighting destruction movies. And that's how we bonded with each other. I mean, I remember at 10 years old, we went to gladiator oh in theaters gosh. watching heads get cut off. Uh, so great fond memories, <laughs> <laughs> but that as equaled connection yeah but to that's for that's a, long a time. feeling it's like a drink of connection yeah. for me and it's hard to let go of that but then it's kind of like instead of going after this discipline as like a, i'm going to shame myself to do this thing because discipline it's the right thing and i'm going to do it because it's the right thing which i don't believe in that kind of discipline it's law-based discipline i believe that it's about going what do i want i want more connection okay well let's have an experiment and get curious. What if we take a week off? What would happen? Yeah. Our hypothesis is that it would be beneficial. We would be more connected. We would have more margin, connect to our hearts. We'd be able to read more. We'd be more at peace. Like there's even so many studies, like you're not even supposed to let your child watch uh, TV or have screens until what, three years three old? Three years old, yeah, to protect their, the their brain from ADHD. Right. And there's so many studies on all these things. It's like, well, why do we expose ourselves to it as adults all the time? If it's not healthy for children, it's probably not healthy for anyone. Yeah. And I mean, it even disrupts degree. sleep. Like yeah. the, all, all we did in our fast is eight days of no TV. Right. And then we had stronger boundaries with our phones in the evening. So yep. at 830 every night, we put our phone away. And read and first thing in the morning, no screens as well. Well, that's what I did. Oh, okay. I yep. did it. Yeah, well, I was better than you. I normally can't read in the morning because I have a, a baby that's like in my face. He wants mama all morning. True. So it's very difficult for me to read. And the rest of the time, just so you know, like we don't have a TV in our living room. We have like a separate upstairs room. So we don't have shows on in front of Wilder ever. We don't let him see any of that stuff. It, the, the most he's gotten is like watching an aquarium video of fish swimming around or like a read aloud book with still book pages. For so it's minutes, basically you did like watch surf wipeouts with me for two minutes. Oh yesterday. yeah. Last night. That's true. Yeah. So, um, so violation. he gets like teeny tiny amounts, but we're really fighting to protect him in that. And we aren't just sitting spaced out while we're with him. Like we'll have like little pockets where we're on our phones. So the end of the day, that really is our only time to like, for me, get to catch up on Instagram messages and to not be needed or wanted for something. And so it was just us like, okay, here's our like hour and a half that we have at the end of the day that we can offer the Lord. And there were so many things in our life. There have been so many things in our life that feel like they're just swirling, like stress over the business, over finances, over our home, over stuff with Wilder, with sleep, with health, with <coughs> fertility. I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> totally kidding. Um, and so we just were in this, this posture where I was like, man, I'm so hungry for more of God and to slow down and quiet and like get clarity that like, why don't we just lay this at God's feet and see how he moves? And part of the inspiration was actually our uh, Spencer's brother and his mom were really struggling in real estate. Oh yeah. And his brother, Sam suggested that they do a fast. And so what they did is every single day they fasted until noon and they worked together in real estate. Yeah, they're partners. So uh, every day until noon they fasted and then they'd come together, they'd pray and then they'd start work. And within six weeks of doing that, I think it was six weeks straight that they did that, right? Within six weeks, everything just fully turned and they haven't been this busy in years. It and was like they had 18 deals for like the next three months. They're just slammed. Deals. And it just was cool to see like, not like I'm gonna fast so that I can get 
provision or so that I can get blessing, but more like, how can I get in the way of what God's already trying to do in my life? Yeah. Like, how can I put myself in a posture where I'm aware of it, where I'm looking for God to show up for me, where I'm not doing things in my own strength, where I'm quieting down and removing distraction to be with him so that I can see how he's trying to move in my life already. And that was a big part of the motivation for me is like, I just want to put ourselves in a position where we're going out of our way to seek him yeah, and, and not just like, well, God's here with us now. And like, that's just okay. Like, I love that belief. I think that that's necessary, but my heart was like, how can we bring more devotion and intentionality? And in short, because we already talked about all of this in our previous podcast that we are going to throw in the dumpster because the audio is bad. Mm-hmm. In riddance. short, it was really, really beautiful to see how much more capacity we had. Like, I know. How much more rested we felt. I went to bed earlier every single night and got I got incredible w- sleep. You got we, like some hundred sleep scores. Yes. my Like my watch was tracking like incredible sleep. When was the last time you had a hundred <laughs> sleep score? Two and a half years ago, <laughs> literally two yeah. and a half years ago. Yeah. It just, I just felt like so much more able to connect with what was actually in my heart. Cause I think at the end of the day, I will sacrifice going to sleep because I want to watch the show or more than that, because I want time with you. Yeah. And that will influence like, okay, I'll stay for five more minutes because he wants five more minutes and I want to like go to bed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the five turns into 10 or 15 more minutes or then I get really into the scene and I like don't want to turn it off. So then I want 10 more minutes and I just get more awake and then more disconnected from what I actually want. And then I'm stimulated. So then I'm like, well, while I'm brushing my teeth, I'm going to scroll on my phone. And then while I'm getting in bed, I'm going to make sure I look up this random thing that I don't need to know. And it just compounds. And I feel like it's led to me more and more stimulation. Yeah. And like, it's led to me feeling more disconnected from myself, which is the opposite of what I want. Well, like, I think the opposite, you know, is like being in the woods with no technology, just there. And, and connected to nature and beauty. And it's like, what's around you, your surroundings, yourself. And that is like one of those things that I feel like we're desperate for in our society, but at the same time, refuse to give ourselves. And it's like, it's interesting because I hear so many people too, they're like, yeah, discipline, yes. It's like, there's kind of two spectrums. And I hear at one end of the spectrum, they'll hear this pod, you'll hear this podcast even and go, oh yeah, here are the right things to do. Let me do them. And, and that black and white thinking is not helpful yeah. because inevitably shame is going to come in, guilt's going to come in, and you're going to apply conditional love to try and motivate yourself. Like I hear so many people that have so much intention. They're like, they're folks like, just be intentional. And that's almost the message they deliver to other people. You need to be more intentional, get with God. You need to get into the word. You need to do this. And, yeah. and turns into I, works and striving. I, I think all those behaviors are good but they can't come from that place of just do it because, oh, is what I'm saying boring you? (laughs) (laughs) I just had to yawn, okay. Just take deep breaths. Your oxygen will make it so you don't need to yawn. That's what I was doing. It was just a long breath with watery eyes is all. You know, you can shut down a yawn if you want to. (laughs) (laughs) Then you couldn't work through your rejection trigger that's coming up. Is that what it is? Yeah, I didn't want to enable you. Oh, thank you for that. You're welcome. (laughs) I'm pro your healing. Thank you. So as I was saying, uh, I think like discipline and intentionality for discipline and intentionality's sake is not the greatest thing to focus on. Those are actually protectors of desire and vision. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you have a desire and a vision for something, What protects those things is delayed gratification, which is discipline. Discipline is I'm gonna say no to now because what I want more is further out ahead. And it requires me saying no to this now. Mm -hmm. And, And really, that's what I've heard, you know, like billionaires as an example, not that money is like a, a measure of true success, but it is a success in an area and it's trackable metrics. So you can see, okay, what went into this guy amassing $5 billion of net worth? A lot of discipline, right? Yeah. And usually those people, they are able, it's, it's not because they 
have the ability to say yes to a lot of things. Typically, if you follow their lives, they're really good at saying no. Mm -hmm. They say no to a lot. And that's something that I think fasting is. It's like, what am I saying no to that's getting in the way yeah. of my true self? Yeah. And, and truly, I think discipline and intentionality is meant to be built on the foundation of identity, purpose, and vision. It's like, mm -hmm. who are you? How loved are you? And therefore, don't you want to do better because yeah. you are better? Yeah. I, I think of that verse, it's like, far be it from me, Lord, to offer you something that doesn't cost me anything. Mm -hmm. And for us in this season, fasting food doesn't make any sense for fertility reasons, right? Like we're right. trying to get pregnant. Yeah, I'm no not thanks. gonna not have food. For those of you out and there- I just wanna do that anyways. <laughs> for those of you out there that have struggled with like body image issues and eating disorders, or even like binge eating, it's probably not a great idea for you to be fasting food if that's an issue. Having more like steadiness is probably better. So I was kind of looking for like, what feels like it will cost me at the end of the day? Like, what's the thing that I'm holding on to that, that I can offer you, Lord? Yeah. And for us, that's dissociation. It's anything that's helping us cope. Like we ha we've been off alcohol for months. Like we'll have a drink here and there, um, but we, we haven't had alcohol consistently for like four months now, I think. And that's another area where we've kind of just stripped back anything that could be a impacting fertility because that's our main motivator right now, mm -hmm. but also be like bringing in a distraction and something that's not offering actual life and health. And it's felt really beautiful getting to see the results of coming out of that dissociation and seeing the things in our hearts that surface when we're connected. Yeah. Like that's the thing with dissociation is it numbs our hearts and oftentimes our hearts won't feel safe enough to bring things to the surface that need to be looked at right. and that need to be healed. And so I love the way it awakened both of our hearts and helped us get more connected to ourselves and to each other and just quiet down. And what was really beautiful is seeing all of these shifts in our life that happen in the same week that we decided to fast. Like I could see God's hand and God's favor. And I, it felt so fun to give him credit for it. Cause that's one of the things that I, I wanted in this fast for us was like, how can, how can we put ourselves in a p like p posture? Wow. P p p p p <laughs> posture and position where we get to give God all of the credit for what happens. Like we do nothing different besides quiet down internally and we get to see God move. And we saw so many areas where God showed up, like in our finances and different things in the business. Uh, a house came up on the market that we really, really like in that same week. Like there are just things where like, regardless of what it turns into, I feel like we really got to see God move. Yeah. And though I wish we could go way more in depth about this, cause I think our heart was to break down the difference between like just doing something like white knuckling it and being disciplined versus like sacrifice and having your heart like in, in the heart posture open to God and doing things out of a place of intentionality and devotion. Like uh, I know we wanted to get way more granular yeah. in that, but we can I do think another our, one too, though. Yeah, I think our, our invitation with this little snippet of a podcast we're doing is what is something in your life that you feel like God might be jealous over? Mm. Like what's an area of your life that you feel like, man, this is something that I love, but I want to lay it at his feet. Like yeah. I want to pour my perfume out on his feet. And <laughs> the thing that is costly to me, I want to hand over to him. And, and get to watch and see how he moves and make myself more sensitive to hearing his voice and to having my eyes open so I can see how he's moving in my life. Yeah, so good. Yeah, well, if you, uh, if you feel like called to step into a life coaching or you feel called to lead, you feel called to influence people, I just wanna remind you that you can look into our coach launch program. We'll put the link into the description. And then it's if been you amazing. are, I know it's been incredible. Um, and if you are a woman and you are looking to go on a journey of connecting with your heart and we, you know, we, I'll just say this, we have all of our courses available, group coaching. There's like an awesome community of women that we've been serving for some time now. And uh, it's very inexpensive. We'll put both links into mm -hmm. the description of the podcast. And then right now, 
uh, I think there's only a few weeks left to uh, join for free uh, what's called Inner Strength. And that's a men's group. I think I've had 140 guys that have already signed up now. Uh, and it's been super amazing. Guys are getting tons of breakthrough. They're vulnerable for the first time in their lives. If you're a man or if you are a man and uh, are interested, if you are a man and you're interested or that if you weird. have a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Yeah. You said if you're a man or if you are a man. No, I said if. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, I meant you have a man. I, it sounded like wow. if, if you were a man or if you are a man is what it sounded like you said. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Let me think about okay, that. where are we going with this? Whew. Uh, I'll, I got this. I'll finish. Can you so go? <laughs> if you are a man or if you know a man Ooh. that could benefit from this, then that link will be in the description below. And as always... Like, rate, review, subscribe, share it with a friend. Shout us out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. A live and free podcast blesses us so much. Yep. Thank you for listening to this very, 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 Pointed. very long episode <laughs> today. And we'll try to keep it short next time. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.